What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus. Welcome to the Shining Light, a place where you're going to learn God's word is going to improve and transform your life. I'm back again with another beautiful daily devotional uh, from Rhapsody of Realities. And today, we're going to be reviewing one of the articles from a devotional by Pastor Chris. The title of the devotion is Saints of God. And um, our theme scripture is taken from Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1. I'm going to read on and then we're going we to analyze the scriptures together, do a Bible study. So he says, Paul, an apostle of, God, of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Alright, let me read on the first paragraph. It says, Judging from the underlying portion of our theme verse, it is clear that the saints aren't only holy Christians who have died and gone to heaven. There were saints at Ephesus, and that what tells us something. If there were saints at that time, there must be saints today. Wow, so we're talking about saints of God. Who who is a saint? Um what does they what is what what does that term mean anyway? Saint. Saint it means to be sanctified it means to be separ uh, separated to God to be holy holy to God that's what a saint means and then when, when, in an everyday um, conversation people think about saints people that have died and gone to heaven they were holy maybe people were like they just prayed all day they were just you know that's people think like Mother Teresa type of saint that's their mentality but um, this scripture says something. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints. These were living people still. When he was writing this letter to the, uh, to the Ephesus church, he referred to them as saints. And not only them, he says, to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Are you faithful in Christ Jesus? Then you are a saint. Um, let's read on. And then the Rhapsody kind of explains it further. He says, there are some who, because of their limited understanding of God's word, a farm, there's no one on earth who is qualified to be a saint. Sometimes some Christians in their discussions would say, I'm not trying to say I'm a saint, but you are. <laughs> the rapture says, you are a saint. You are chosen. You are special to God. That's, a, that's, a, that's what it means to be a saint. It means someone that's consecrated, someone that's holy to God. That's what the, what the word saint means. It's some, someone that's special, holy consecrated unto God and based on us on those uh, the criteria of that that means every Christian is a saint you might be like oh I'm not holy relax I'm gonna show you this in a second let's just go to the scriptures right now real quick um, let us look at the book of Peter I'm reading I'm reading the amplified version first Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, this is who you are as a Christian. This is your description. Let me highlight that. He says, but you are. Actually, let me read an amplified classic. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9. No, you know what? Let's do amplified, sorry. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9. First Peter. Oh, I'm talking in Ephesians chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. He says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation. That's what a saint means. Someone that's consecrated. Someone that's special to God. And this is what it is. It says, A special people for God's own possession. Did you see those descriptions? What God describes you as? He said, he, You are chosen right? The Christian is a special the Christian is a is a different race this is not a human race they're different you know this is not like when people look at it like oh you either white or black no this is beyond this about a different species of being you know when you have like the plant life you have animal life and then you have humans and then you have different kind of lives fish animals they're different lives the Christian is a special race is a special breed this is a different species a sp different creature altogether a different species altogether and he says you are a chosen race god chose you that means you're a saint you are specifically chosen by god a chosen race a royal priesthood 
you are a king and you are a priest to God. A consecrated nation. God has specifically separated you, consecrated you, a special people for God's own possession so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And if you keep on going on, ooh, 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 let me read that. It says, once you are not a people at all, but now you're God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Hmm. That is awesome. That's what a saint is. You are a saint. You are God's special folk, consecrated unto God, chosen unto God. All right, let me read on the rest of it. It says, the question to ask is, who are saints? Saints are those who have been purified in Christ by the virtue of the new birth and have been consecrated to God. They'll be made holy unto God. They've been separated from the world unto Christ. The separation took place the instant you were born again. It was done by the Holy Ghost. The minute the Spirit of God came to live in you, you became a saint. Because you cannot be a saint without God's Spirit living in you. That's why He came to live in you, because you were holy. God cannot dwell. Remember, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. He cannot dwell in an unclean temple. If you are not a saint, God will not live in you. The Spirit of God will not live in in a temple that's not been sanctified, that's not been separated unto him. He came, he chose us to live in us. And I'm and that separation from the world is what makes us saints. And he says, Therefore, as a child of God, you became a saint. You were born that way. Because you're in Christ. Someone says, But saints are holy people. Yes, and that's who the Christian is. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, we are called holy brethren. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly call, calling. Notice the expression, partakers of the heavenly calling. The Hebrew recipients of the epistle were living on earth when it was written to them. They were addressed as holy and partakers of the heavenly calling. I want to show you another scripture to us in further study. I think it's Ephesians chapter 5, chapter 1, verse 4, or 5, 27. Let's look in one of those. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Um, we are definitely holy. Don't get it twisted. We are holy. Don't don't look at your, your, your actions and think, oh, I can't be holy. Uh, 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 oh yeah, there you go. Let's read. Let's read. Uh, you know what? Let me read the King James version for that. Don't let your experiences define who you are as a Christian. The Word of God is who defines you. Let God define who you are. And some reading. So Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, it says, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. God chose us before the, he made the whole world. That we should be holy without blame before him in love. No one should blame you. You are blameless. Because he chose us to be holy in him. Without blame. Don't even blame yourself. You are blameless because you are in him and we are holy. This is big. <laughs> no one can blame you. It is not your fault because Jesus was judged on our behalf. So we are without blame before him. No one accuses us before him. He does not accuse us before him because he has chosen us before him as holy. That we should be holy without blame. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so... Uh, so yeah... From, I'm going to keep on reading. It says, you being a saint has nothing to do with man's description of you or even your personal opinion of you. It is about what God says. He calls us names according to his vision and perception of us. Your, your responsibility, therefore, is to answer the name he has called you. 
respond to what God says who you are. The Bible, the Word of God is like an instruction manual that shows you what God has done for you, who you really are, where you're from, your genealogy, what you can do. It reveals your identity. The, what, the, the world out there does not describe you. The world will blame you. Say, oh, how can you say you're holy? The other day I saw you smoking a cigarette. You're not holy. No, you're still holy. If you're a Christian, despite of what you've done, you you were sanctified. God chose you to be holy. And he keeps on reading. He says, for that reason, the next time someone queries you and says, are you saying you're a saint? And you, you ought to say, yes, I am, because God said so. In your mind, you might, you might not think you are, but once you align your thoughts with God's thoughts, you start to live accordingly. Once you recognize you're a saint and you're holy and you live accordingly, the things that you were struggling with will start falling off, start falling away. You might be thinking, oh my God, I've been do doing this thing. I can't stop doing it and it's bad. And, and the word of God says, I'm a saint. I want to stop doing it before I can accept being a saint. No, you're still a saint while doing it. But now you got to line up your mind, renew your mind with God's word, and accept who you are, and then you, your actions will follow. Um, the last paragraph says, you have to learn to agree with God. For the Christian life is walking in agreement with God, and two cannot walk together except they're in agreement. That's Amos chapter 3, verse 3. So call yourself what God has called you, not what the world calls you, not what you call yourself based on experiences. What, the, what does God say about you? Say that. Accept that. Hallelujah. So let's take this confession together. Repeat this after me. I'm a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy, sanctified, peculiar treasure unto God. I've been granted the gift of righteousness and ordained to be holy. I'm blameable and irreprovable in his sight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You can read further studies of what we just discussed in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, Romans chapter 1, verse 7. And you can follow a one-year Bible plan or two-year plan. Pick whichever one that suits you. You can go over the Bible in one year. And I hope you've been blessed by today's devotion. If you have any questions, queries, leave them in the comment section. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe. I really appreciate your support. And if you're not born again, you can be a saint. We just read you become a saint by being washed by Christ, by his word, and receiving him. So I want to lead you into a prayer of salvation to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So say this after me. Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe He died for me and God raised Him from the dead. I believe He's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through Him and in His name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. You're now a saint of God. Because you're born again. Make sure you leave me a comment. Subscribe to this channel so you can learn more of God's word that will transform and build your life strong. Until tomorrow, it's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.